different types of audio codecs. And what I wanted to talk about briefly was what we've done at Mine Electronics for the Abbey that is specific for the, the boomer community. Uh, the, the portable player that we've taken is very similar to an iPod Shuffle, a little bit larger, uh, has raised buttons so it's very easy to navigate around, uh, but more importantly, it, it, it docks right into the base system, so you don't have to have a computer to operate this product. It's not because my parents don't know how to use a computer, and my, my dad does digital imaging, and you know my mom is all over email and eBay, but they, they just don't want to, so they, they want to spend their time doing other things. So being able to take this out of the box without a user guide, plug it in, turn it to the favorite FM station, and have portable music, which is commercial free by the way, uh, and, and have it on the go with included earbuds and a, and a car kit is the, the benefit that this solution, uh, solution provides. And the, uh, the Abbey system is, is something that we showed off last year as a concept and we're now shipping with. And from consumer feedback this year, people have asked us to incorporate it on mobile phones. So we are displaying a concept with the Abbey, which will connect to the iPhone, the iPod Touch, and the Google Android, and later this year the uh, BlackBerry systems. So again, for my boomer parents, this is, these are products that is the latest technology which comes in, uh, a, you know, a concept that just fits into their lifestyle. Uh, additionally, we have a brand, Livio Radio, we're displaying the NPR radio by Livio in our booth. This is another product that takes all of the NPR content, which is available on a website, and puts it into the coolest toaster-sized appliance for radio that you can get. All you have to have is a wireless internet connection. Again, giving people what they really need, and just setting every, all the other bells and whistles aside. Sure. I just, uh, there's another common theme there that seems to pop up is sometimes a lot of this is not about what people can't do. It's that they don't necessarily really want to or enjoy doing it. So another example is, you know, entering your phone book entries on a, on a, on a phone that has a numeric keypad. It's not a pleasant experience, triple tapping in numbers. Does anyone really enjoy doing that? I don't care how old you are. It's not a fun experience. So one of the things we did was we had that so you know you do it online it automatically updates over the air or you can call a live operator who will do it for you and have it update over the air and then we expanded that into things like looking at problems saying you know um, my mom doesn't you know has the the fridge calendar and you know puts the calendar on the fridge and has all the appointments in pencil while well, sometimes she forgets because she doesn't have something to remind her so she's not benefiting from some of that technology and uh, and also if she's at the doctor's office and they're saying can you do an appointment at two o'clock well you know she doesn't know because her calendar's on the fridge so one of the things that we've also done is having that online calendar that provides reminders on the phone that either I can put in appointments for my mom on the calendar or uh, she can call the operator and have those appointments put in as well so that it's a completely integrated platform experience that takes things that you know she could do but aren't necessarily fun to do or, or, uh, and really capitalizing on that as an opportunity to provide a higher level of service for this, uh, for this group of people that we call simplicity seekers. I like that phrase. Yeah. Uh, a couple of the gadgets that I've seen in the last couple of days uh, from, from some of the uh, digital imaging companies, including Kodak, are uh, picture frames with their own email addresses so that you don't have to deal with the computer. You can just uh, send a picture straight to the, the picture frame so that grandma can see the kid uh, at college and so on. Uh, I, I'd like to hear from you guys uh, as to what devices you've seen on the show floor that you think are really going to be a boom for boomers or, or, or for seniors, or uh, conversely, if there's any stuff that you've looked at going, you know, uh, we couldn't touch this with a 10-foot pole. Some thoughts? Yes? No? Yeah. It'd be interesting. It seems like for a lot of talk about converging from multiple products to a single product for most people. In other words, we don't want the iPod, the Kindle, the thing. Do you think that's true for this demographic as well, or would they rather have targeted products or targeted solutions? Guys? Well, I, you know, what 
what we're trying to do is try to create this like a platform. We really believe that this is, you know, very similar to an iPhone, that it's an application updating, you know, uh, phone. So you can go to our website and have services uploaded and it'll update apps on the phone so that this is really a portal. So we believe that, you know, there is an opportunity to deliver multiple services through here. If anyone was here for the earlier healthcare panel, I mean, we're trying to deliver mobile health and wellness solutions through the Jitterbug experience as well. So again, this is going to be your telephone, it's access to information, it's connectivity to your friends and family, as well as uh, it's a, a device to help you manage your well-being. And, and ju just a quick add-on, I think when people are buying our product, um, we see people wanting um, a computer and uh, they, they want it to look and feel like they're kids or grandkids computer I, they, I mean they don't you know they don't want uh, the touch screen and stuff like that hasn't hasn't we've never had any luck with it so I think as 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 things emerge you know I, I mean as technology emerges I think we'll, we'll have to be flexible with how we migrate to other platforms um, right over here. Um, well, I think that this, you know, the concierge is maybe going a little too far, but I think you're, you're absolutely right. And I think what technology is enabling is for us to do that cost effectively today. So we can do things by controlling the phone now remotely. So it feels like there's a lot more uh, effort going into some of the things we're doing than it actually is. So updating a phone book over the air now, it's, it's really easy. So, um, you know, I think it's enabling some of those things, but it's a conscious choice for a company to decide whether you want to, uh, you know, take profits and put it towards service or not. And most companies that aren't focused in this space aren't doing that. And that's why when I started, I said, you know, we're talking about gadgets and hardware and everything, but there's a common theme, uh, you know, you're really seeing is it's more than that. If you're not delivering the service experience through that, it's not going to work for this group that we're talking about. And so, you know, we really believe in that. Uh, from a financial side, uh, I mean, our business is really based on free. So with our products, there's no subscriptions and there's no... That's a great price. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you buy it and that's it. But at the same time, it uh, kind of leads into the earlier question about that single device. If you consolidate to one device, it comes with a inherent complex, you know, very complex system of different applications, which needs that service. So it, it's a concession that we choose to make by sticking to audio products and radios, and it's something that we all grew up on a radio, and, and that's our angle. But I think the, the what, what I think really what this panel is is more about making things accessible and cool. You know, so it's not a, a medical product. These are fun, you know, gadgets. Ben. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have a good experience with that. Um, when, when we started, I, I, had, I had two other partners when I started the company. And we went out and we said, we're going to build a senior computer. And, and, and we went into the senior living industry kind of by accident. They were the only people who would give us a, plat, a, a community in Houston was, were the only people who would put computers in and let us experiment in their computer room. So, so we said, we're going to build what we think they'll want. And uh, we were fortunate enough that they, the, uh, the community didn't kick us out when we changed the platform significantly twice in the first six to seven months. Um, after, that, uh, after that, we've just um, made a point to always keep in touch with our, with, with our clients, to, to get feedback back and forth, and to bring people in to the company that are familiar with the industry. I mean, sitting in the front row here, uh, Chuck Lalonde. Chuck, raise your hand. Chuck was a, a client of ours. He ran a continuum, continuum of care retirement community in Houston. He was in touch with 60-year-olds. He was in touch with 80-year-olds. He was in touch with 
people in nursing, on the nursing side, he was in touch with people who just wanted to sell their home and, and move into a luxury apartment. So that's how, that's how we've done it. We have a three-stage process. The, uh, the first thing is having the prototypes running through initial focus groups. Uh, but then after we've then refined from those focus groups, we actually sit down and do a... Um